fellow Musketeers, and welcome to Mondays with Mickey. My name is Mike Kennedy, and I am your host, and this is the week of December 7th, 2015. This week, we're going to go ahead and talk about our rides and our trip back in September, and you know, give you kind of a feel for how we felt about them, some of the stuff that went on, some of the fun stuff that you know happened in regards to it. But before that, I have news, as always. I'm going to start off with probably the most important piece of news, and that would be the fact that, yes... This episode is a day late. I apologize. We had a lot of family things going on on Monday. And I did try to record it on Monday, and it just didn't turn out right. So, with all the noise in the background, it ended up blurry. I said, forget it. We'll just go ahead and record it this morning after all the kids leave before I go to work. But the real important piece of news actually comes from yesterday, December 7th itself. It's a day that we celebrated, or remembered rather, the uh, day in which the United States was brought into World War II, December 7th, 1941. It's a day that will live in infamy, as it's been said many, many times. It was the day that Japan attacked the base at Pearl Harbor, uh, unprovoked. You know, it, there's a lot of history involved there. I'm not going to get into that. I could make almost a whole episode on the events at Pearl Harbor, both leading up to it and following it. But the most important piece about Pearl Harbor today is the fact that it changed the direction of our country. Like 9-11 did several years back, it was a, I hate to use the term game changer, but it definitely changed the direction in which our country was proceeding. It brought us into World War II. It, it just changed the culture in many ways. So if you're not familiar with the events of Pearl Harbor, definitely I would recommend going in uh, going back into the history books and, and reading about it. Uh, I know there's probably some people that are outside the country, outside the United States, that it's really not that important to. But if, you, if you're a U.S. citizen, it, it's a major event in our history. It's one that's worth remembering and understanding. So, But let's get off the negativity of war and such and get into some other news, like Star Wars. I know it's war, but it's Star Wars. It's a sci-fi thing. It's fun. So let's get into that. Hollywood Studios, Disney's Hollywood Studios, is has opened up some new Star Wars type stuff, starting with Launch Bay. Launch Bay is a preview center, and essentially it walks you through a lot of memorabilia from the original movies, you know, dealing with the Empire, dealing with the Rebels. It walks you through some of the memorabilia of the new movies. They have like Ray's speeder in there. Uh, from the prequels, they have Anakin's pod racer in there. They have like helmets from Captain Phasma. They have like Anakin's lightsaber, Luke's lightsaber. They have some of the stuff from the animated series. Like um, I think Ahsoka's lightsaber is there. Things of that nature. So lots of memorabilia for you to check out if you're a Star Wars fan. They also have two meet and greets. They have the light side meet and greet with Chewbacca, and if you go through his queue, you'll see some specific things that are just for the light side, like helmets from different pilots and things like that, in the queue waiting to get to Chewbacca. And then they have the dark side meet and greet, and the dark side meet and greet is Darth Vader. And like Chewbacca, he has his own you know, memorabilia and such as you go through the queue heading up to him. But uh, very cool options there. You can also meet a Jawa over by the cantina portion, which is kind of cool. So, lots of good stuff for Star Wars fans, and it's definitely a, a great way to hype up for the new movie. There's also a video uh, movie screen thing that they put up near there called Path of the Jedi. And this is essentially the Cliff's Notes version of the Star Wars movies to date, starting with Episode 1 all the way through Episode 6. And basically, it just gives a brief synopsis of each movie, you know, using clips and such from the movies. Just kind of bring people up to speed in the storyline, up to where we are now. And then it finishes up with previews from the new movie. So, really cool tie-in with Launch Bay. All with the whole showcasing what's coming up. Also, they have officially added the Jakku battle sequence to Star Tours. So that's a new addition. Uh, for those who aren't aware of what they've done with that, you know, and anybody who's ridden the Star Tours attraction, essentially, you get in the Star Tours to go to whatever destination you go, and 3PO ends up getting stuck on the on the ship and piloting it accidentally, and he you end up getting caught by the dark side and all that. Well, you in the Star Tours, you always get sent on some kind of a mission, usually for the rebellion. 
In this case, in this new battle, this new world sequence, Finn sends you on this mission. Finn being the stormtrooper from the new movie that we'll obviously get to know here soon, hopefully. Um, and halfway through that, you also get like some messages from BB-8 and whatnot. And you go to the Battle of Jakku from the new movie, following the Millennium Falcon through the battle sequence. So that's officially now part of it. And also the Jedi Training Academy, which is right next door. This actually ties into our trip. We noticed when we went to Disney's Hollywood Studios that there were construction walls up around the Jedi Training Academy. Jedi Training Academy, essentially kids get to go up and, and learn to be a Jedi. They fight Darth Vader and all that kind of cool stuff. And the, the stage that was set up, kind of very reminiscent of the blast doors to the shield generator room on Endor. And being that, you know, next to that is the giant Adat, along with the Ewok village. It all kind of themed into each other. Well, we thought, since the construction walls were up, that maybe that was going to be moving somewhere else with the new expansion of Star Wars. We were wrong. They brought down those construction walls and reopened the Jedi Training Academy. But now it looks completely different. It's a temple instead of these blast doors of the shield generator thing. It's a, it's a temple for training Jedi. And like in Empire Strikes Back, where Luke had to face his greatest fear, Darth Vader, that temple is where these younglings are going to face their greatest fear. And so far, the characters that they've brought out of this temple to face the kids have been Darth Vader, the seventh sister from the animated series, and Darth Maul. So, kind of cool. They, they, they've brought in three different genres of the Star Wars series, and they've kind of put a little more lore into the Training Academy with the whole temple. Nice addition, nice update. So, with that, they, they're really opening up some Star Wars stuff over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. They also opened up Club Disney. And I don't recall whether I've talked about this in the past. I know I've talked about it, but I don't know if I've talked about the opening of it. But it has opened up. And it's a great place for kids to go in, parents as well. And it's a club atmosphere for kids. And they can come in and cool off. The major characters from Disney come out to play. Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, Donald, Goofy, Pluto, and Chip and Dale. They come out and they come out and play with the kids and dance with the kids on the dance floor. There's giant screens on the walls where kids can go up and color pictures. It's not actual coloring with paint or anything like that, but you know they choose a color and they can swipe their hand across and, and color it. Kind of like in uh, one of my previous videos where I showed you the Honey Pot experience over at Winnie the Pooh in Magic Kingdom. Where you put your hand on the screen, you move it, and you can swipe the honey somewhere. Similar idea where your hand becomes the paintbrush. So they have several walls where you can do that. They have charging stations with couches so people can sit down, relax, charge their phones, and while the kids play and have fun. All the while, there's a Mad Hatter looking DJ who is playing Radio Disney type music, so kids save music. Uh, along the, uh, almost to the ceiling, the whole perimeter of the club is lined with video screens right up, ne right up to the ceiling. And on those screens, they play clips of the different Disney movies, kind of going along with the music. When that's not up there, there's like this cool, colorful shadow thing of like Mickey dancing and whatnot. So really a nice nightclub atmosphere for Disney, but geared towards kids and families. So that way, you know, people who are in the Florida heat and need to break off for something to cool down while the kids still burn off some energy... It works out well. It's over uh, between. It's sit, it's situated over between Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror. It's kind of right in the corner between the two of them. It's a Sunset Showcase. Oh uh, yeah, Sunset Showcase. So if you're coming into Disney's Hollywood Studios and you're kind of holding to the right hand side, you'll see the the road that leads down to Tower of Terror. You can't miss it. And down that way, that's where you'll find Club Disney. So. Very cool to see that they're actually opening things at Disney's Hollywood Studios as opposed to closing things. And that helps keep that value at Disney's Hollywood Studios, especially with all this remodeling that's getting ready to happen. So, with that said, uh, that finishes up my news. So, before I get into the actual rides, I always have a picture, I have some videos and pictures for you. So, take a minute, watch the video and pictures, and we'll be right back. Hollywood Tower Hotel was a star. 
A beacon for the show business elite. Until five people step through the door of an elevator and turn into a nightmare. Now that door has opened once again. For you.
All right, well, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a little bit of fun with it. You know, we've got some Indiana Jones in there. you got the Tower of Terror ride video in there. got plenty of pictures. Hope you guys liked it. I'm going to start off talking about Muppet Vision 3D or 4D, whatever it is, <laughs> Muppet Vision. And uh, we really enjoyed this ride. Obviously, it's not a ride. It's an attraction. It's a show. But we really enjoy it. This is something we make a point to go to every time we go there. Um, it really hasn't changed too much over the years, but the 3D effects are fantastic. The pre-show area was really cool, because this is the first time we've seen it with Muppets Most Wanted update. So, you know, we're watching the, you know, the fake Kermit talking about his evil plans. So, definitely a lot of fun, very kid-friendly. If you're a Muppet fan, this is going to be right up your alley, and they don't miss a beat with it. But I like the tie-in because it talks about like the, the spark of imagination, which kind of ties in a little bit to Figment. So, really enjoyed Muppet Vision 3D. You know, the effects were awesome, and, and Muppets are always cool, but the whole package all together, lots of fun. I would talk about Star Tours, but we talked about that last week. So, yes, we did Star Tours. Next up on the list, I'm going to talk about Tower of Terror. Now, Tower of Terror has some interesting history with us. My wife and daughter ride it every time we go. I've ridden it once. I rode it the first time I went to Walt Disney World, and I'm glad I did. But it's just not really my thing. I really don't like free falling. Uh, as a bigger guy myself, the whole, you know, my belly up here and the rest of my body down here thing, it's uncomfortable and can be painful sometimes. And so it's not really for me. But my wife and daughter ride it, and they love riding it because there's a little history there. The first time my wife rode it, she was pregnant with my daughter. Well, my stepdaughter. I hate to put it that way. My daughter. Um, she rode it with her, and she was pregnant. And she had no idea she was pregnant. So when you see shirts saying, oh, I survived Tower of Terror, they really apply to my daughter Natalie. Absolutely 100%. Because she literally did survive Tower of Terror. Because if you're pregnant, you're not supposed to ride it. So, kind of interesting. So they make a point to almost make it a tradition that every time we go, that they have to ride it together since they rode together the first time. My son and I do not ride it. My son is terrified of it, um, mainly probably because I don't like it. I don't. I don't want to ride it. And I'm assuming if he sees that I don't want to ride it, he don't. He doesn't want to ride it. But I'm sure one day he will. But this time around, there was a little funny interaction with it because you know we made a joke. About, well, maybe we'll see you guys. If not, we'll use up your our meal credits and things like that. And, and just kind of being smart Alex about them might not coming back from Tower of Terror. Well, a few minutes after they leave, they get in, they go up and get in line. They had fast passes. And we're expecting, oh, they'll, they'll be down really quickly because they had fast passes. A few minutes after they leave, we hear something about the ride um, breaking down. And there was an announcement over the loudspeakers that... Uh, that there was some kind of an error and that the ride was being closed. And we didn't see the girls right away. We sat there for a few minutes. We're like, whoa, what is going on? Where are they at? And, you know, obviously we weren't seriously concerned that they were hurt. But there was that little nugget in the back of our heads going, did we wish something bad on our on, on Mom and, and Natalie? Well, eventually they came down. Apparently only one of the, um, one of the, elevator shafts closed down for some kind of a small error but they continued running people on the other shaft and it just took a little longer because they're trying to funnel two lines into one but uh yeah so they came down we told them they laughed at us and yeah i'm sure they'll be holding that overheads for a while right next door is rock and roller coaster now at disney's hollywood studios this is one of my favorite rides actually this is one of my favorite rides at walt disney world in general i'm not a big roller coaster fan but as far as roller coasters are concerned, this one's pretty cool. It's indoor, you know, you really don't see the ground per se, it's in the dark, uh, but it's very themed around Aerosmith. I love Aerosmith, so it really works out well for me. There's very few roller coasters I like, and that and like and Space Mountain are two of the ones I like. Maybe because they're indoors and you don't see the drops so much. There aren't really big drops on these rides. They're kind of self-propelled almost, so it, it works out really well for me. My son was very nervous about this ride. I got him on it, but he was very nervous about this ride. He was asking me all kinds of questions. How many times you go upside down? You know, 
Will he see the ground? Anything he could come up with, he, he started asking him questions. And as we got closer, he started trying to get out of it. We talked him into it. We got him to ride it. And uh, afterwards, he was kind of mad at me because apparently there are more upside-down points than I had told him. Um, I didn't remember. I hadn't ridden the ride in 15 years. Because the previous trip, we didn't ride it because he was terrified of rides. So... It was kind of an interesting experience. He, he was kind of, I, mean, I think he's glad he rode it, but he doesn't want to ride it again. So hopefully this next trip, in, next September, when we go, I'll get to ride it once or twice since he won't be there and I don't have to worry about, you know, him being terrified of it. So next up on the list is going to be the Great Movie Ride. Great Movie Ride for me is a classic ride. It, it's, it's signature Disney's Hollywood Studios. And it's all about movies. So for me, it's no-brainer. We've got to ride it every time. It's a little dated, a little hokey. You know, the, the, the ride is very, very regimented because you, you're riding through scenes of movies. But it's still a lot of fun. You know, it's, it, the alien section's really cool. The Wizard of Oz looks great. Um, I mean, some of these animatronics are fantastic. Some, not so much. But it's a great ride. And since it's been, since they've been revamping it, with the changeover in ownership, um, the opening shows changed, so it's being narrated differently. The lobby itself has changed, so instead of having static posters, there's posters that change uh, on their own, so you can see multiple different posters as you're standing in line. Also, at the end of the ride, they've changed the the closing video, showing a, a new variety of movies to check out, which also included, incidentally, bits and pieces from the new Star Wars movie. So, same ride as far as the, the meat and potatoes of it, but the opening and closing of the ride have changed. And since they're cleaning up the outside facade of the Chinese theater, because the hat's down, the, the ride's taken on a little different flavor. We really enjoyed it. Again, this is one of those rides that we're going to ride every single time we go, because it's classic and it's, it's part of the nostalgia of Disney's Hollywood Studios. But it was nice to see some changes and some updates, and they did a good job with it. So if you're there, definitely check it out. Like I said, it's it's kind of the history of Disney's Hollywood Studios, so it's worth checking out. Uh, next up is going to be the first ride that we rode uh, at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and this would be Toy Story Midway Mania. Now, this is quite possibly the most difficult ride to get into at Disney's Hollywood Studios, simply because it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. We actually have the game that this ride is based off of, or the game, the ride that the, or the game that the ride is based off, I don't know. How, I'm not sure which one came first, chicken or egg. But we have the game. <laughs> and uh, we have it for the Wii. And it's the same game that you play in Midway Mania. The difference is you're not in a car and you don't have this big contraption that you're shooting with. But it's the same game. And so, you know, we played it at home before and we loved it. And we knew that we wanted a ride at this time and we knew how popular it is. So basically, the second we got into the park, we beelined to Toy Story Midway, Toy Story Midway Mania. Uh, the, the, that was probably one of our longest waits in the whole trip, was because we wanted to go there. And we didn't have fast passes for it, because my son chose all the fast passes for the day, and you know, Star Tours was very high up there on the list. So we, uh, we we beelined to it. We really liked it. This is the first time we've actually ever ridden Toy Story Midway Mania. And the theming is really cool because the whole idea is that you're shrunk down to the size of a toy and you're going in to play with this midway game set that the Toy Story characters have found. So as you're going through the queue, you're seeing giant crayons and just like yo-yos and things like that. You come up to Mr. Potato Head who's telling jokes and he's huge, he's larger than life, but again, you're supposed to be shrunk down to the size of a toy so it makes sense. And eventually you get into the car you get your 3D glasses on, and they take you around to different video screens and spin you around, and you get to shoot and, and get points. I happen to get the highest score of the four of us. They're all kind of bitter. There's actually, in that uh, series of pictures I put up, there was actually a picture of the score screen in me and my son's car. I couldn't get my wife and daughter simply because, <laughs> excuse me, simply because we were in separate cars. So, it is what it is. But I still beat them, so it's okay. So we really enjoyed it overall. It was a lot of fun. I can I entirely understand now why they're adding a second track to it, because it's really popular. It's fun, and they really need to be able to get more and more people into it. So 
Looking forward to seeing that second track come up and see if maybe they add some special features to that track. We'll see what happens. And finally, we're going to talk about the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. Now, I am a big Indiana Jones fan, and this is a, an experience that I truly recommend. If you're near Walt Disney World, if you're going to be going there, and you have the opportunity to check this out, check it out. I say this and I emphasize this because there are a lot of rumors about the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular going away. I've even heard rumblings from some cast members who work with Indiana Jones that they're expecting to get the axe anytime. The talk is that it's going away as part of the expansion for the Star Wars land. Now, I don't know if it's true or not. I think it really should stay because it's part of Lucasfilm and it kind of ties in to all the Lucasfilm type stuff. And I know it's not exactly Star Wars, but it would be on the outskirts of the Star Wars land anyway. So. I really hope they don't get rid of it because I think it's unique. Again, I know they're going away from the whole studios aspect. And this show is kind of a behind the scenes look at stunts done for movies. But it's an awesome show. I, and I would really hate to see Walt Disney World walk away from, Indi from the Indiana Jones franchise and not have some kind of representation in their parks. But this is one of those shows, again, that we like going to. If it's there, we're going to go check it out every single time. We go to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Because for us, it's one of those classic rides. It's about a movie. It's about the Indiana Jones movies, in which I love the Indiana Jones movies. But it's cool because you get to see some of the stunt work, the t st style of stunt work that they use for like when he's being chased by the boulder. You get to see the whole fight scene around the plane, how they stage that, some of the explosions, people falling off buildings. There's a lot of joking and laughing around about it. Uh, there's actually in the past been some Star Wars tie-ins too. So it's a, it's a great show to watch. It changes up a little bit each show because they bring in different people to be, you know, guests, you know, guest stunt doubles. So it's a lot of fun. It, it's, a, it's a cute show. It's, I think, a 30 or 40 minute show. So definitely one of those, you're going to sit down, you got to take some time to watch it but it's all shaded and, and, and not enclosed but you know you got a roof over your head so it, it's a little cooler than being out in the blazing heat and it's just, it's a fun show to watch like I say if you're a fan of the Indiana Jones series this is definitely for you and again if you're also if you're a fan of the Indiana Jones series check it out because I cannot guarantee it's gonna be around much longer they closed Backlot Tour that's a, a staple ride for Disney Hollywood Studios that everyone thought would be there forever and it's gone and it's gone because they're making room for Star uh, Star Wars Land and, and the Toy Story Land. So, if you're in the area and you're, Star and you're a Neo Jones fan, check it out. It may be your last opportunity. I hope not, but you never know. There was one other attraction, ride wise, well, it's not really a ride, it's an attraction, that we did. I'm not going to talk about it this week, I'm going to talk about it next week. And that would be One Man's Dream. So, now that I'm talking about next week, I'm going to talk about One Man's Dream next week. It's basically the history of Walt Disney. It's probably my favorite attraction as far as a regular everyday attraction. Um, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about our meet and greets with like Mickey and the Cars characters. I'm going to do my top three, bottom three experiences at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I did shrink it down for this particular park because we were only there for one day. So we only saw so much. And it would kind of be unfair to you know be like the top five or the top ten, bottom five, bottom ten. Because it's just, it's only one day, and that, that would be too much. It was hard enough to do it for Magic Kingdom. This would be even worse. So I'm going to do top three, bottom three, just like we did with Magic Kingdom. I'm also going to talk about our experience with Fantasmic. I'm going to close it out with the closing show, like I did with Magic Kingdom. So, with that said, that's pretty much everything for this week, and next week you can see what's coming. I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, I hope we never lose sight of one thing. This was all started by a mouse. Thank you so much for watching me this week. I apologize again for it being late. And I look forward to seeing you guys all next week. Have a great one.